fewer fishes today. We are deeper today than we have been throughout this cruise. We're at a depth of 1782 meters. And we're at the interface here between soft sediment at the base of a large scarp. Yeah, we, we noted yesterday that the rocks seem to be stronger. Um, we don't see a lot of uh, detachments from the rock. In terms of age, uh, when we say Eocene, that's about 50 million years ago. 50, uh, 55 to 30, uh, 33 or 34. Okay. We're really uh, here at a large debris field. There's the rubble sc scattered at the base of the wall. This is a field of large blocks. This is a huge debris field of uh, cup corals, um, all dead, all littering the bottom, which suggests that we probably have a good wall face in front of us. So our depth is 1775. We're coming over the top here of this cliff. Hard substrate is protruding, and you can see a thin veneer of sediment overlaying this, this rock scarp. For our viewers out there, you're seeing the seafloor with us for the first time. Uh, this is exciting. We have a um, really great thing about telepresence, too, is that we have uh, 28 people with us, um, experts in various groups, various organisms, various regions worldwide in the deep sea. And uh, we're all exploring and learning together here what's on the east wall of Atlantis Canyon. classic sea pan, you can uh, nicely see the bulbous base that it inflates in order to anchor itself in the mud. Getting really great uh, close-up imagery here of this sea pen. Uh, you can see the individual polyps. You can also see the tissue is kind of transparent and inflated around that single white uh, axial skeleton, which is called the rachis. Sea pens are interesting. The uh, overall colony that you're looking at here is actually one single giant polyp and sticking off the side are what are called polyp leaves and each of these individual small polyps where you're seeing the tentacles are budding off of that one giant one that's actually anchored into the sediment. You know, I think this is really interesting. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first metallogorgia that we've seen this far north not on a seamount. I don't know that we've seen any on the slope, and maybe um, Les can correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't believe they've seen these further north up off uh, Newfoundland. But it's just strikingly different from uh, any other dive we've had. And, uh, you know, when you could, maybe it's because we're deeper. We know that depth uh, causes a strong zonation in the composition of uh, fauna. Been on almost uh, every deep sea environment that we go to, whether it's seamounts or gulfs or uh, even mid ocean ridges. Just another another uh, example of how we we know so little, uh, but um, keep trying to understand the patterns. One of the reasons that we're interested in bamboo corals in particular from a paleoceanography standpoint is that they have both of a gorgona node and a carbonate or a calcium carbonate inner node. The carbon signature in the skeleton of those corals is in fact a uh, signature of what's happening in the surface ocean. So it only takes you know a couple of days to a couple of weeks for that uh, particulate organic matter, that marine snow that we were talking about yesterday, to sink from the surface to the deep ocean. And that's the primary source of uh, carbon for those corals. So 
Um, so while they may be living at a depth of 400 meters or 1800 meters, they're in fact recording surface processes. Right, so another connection from the surface of the ocean to the bottom of the sea floor, even a mile down. Yes. The, uh, these swimmerettes moving, the shrimp. I think this is a different species than we've seen so far. It's pretty amazing how they alternate. Hey, I just saw this closely. This is one of these benthic tinafores. You can see the tentacles I was saying to look for the other day. Coming from the lower part of it and then on the upper part, streaming out to the right. I see, I see the one on the upper now. That's awesome. Yeah, this is great uh, video. We rarely get to see this up close uh, like this. This concludes our dive today on the east wall of Atlantis Canyon. We are currently off the coast of the northeastern United States, surveying the continental slope off of Atlantis Canyon. And we are leaving the bottom now at a depth of 1622. We traverse close to 200 meters of the seafloor. Uh, the base of uh, the steep slope, uh, we had a different coral community than we are seeing uh, 200 meters shallower. Dive objectives today uh, include characterizing the geomorphology of this west wall of Alvin Canyon at a depth ranging from approximately 1,950 meters to up to 850 meters. So not very steep here today, uh, not covering a lot of depth. We'll also we'll be characterizing the benthic communities in this area, including deep sea coral and sponge communities. The depth is 891 meters. We are at the base of our first uh, rock wall or very steep slope of the day. It seems like this example shows more of a cut into the rock than before. Yep. Oh yeah, this one looks pretty deep. Um, it still doesn't show up very big on the... On the Stone off, but it's, it's quite a, a deep cut. It appears to be cut into the wall, but doesn't extend deeply into it, which again makes me think it's, it's anthropogenic, a fishing line being dragged up. Every dive so far, we have seen trash. We have seen discarded uh, fishing gear. We've seen monofilament line. A lot of growth on that line. Mm -hmm. Hydroids look like. Yeah, I wonder if that anemone is attached as well. Does uh, seeing more of these vertical um, white stars suggest that it is long lines or, or not? They they certainly don't appear to be fractures. They're not they're not pervasive and through going through the, the rock themselves. It, it just really seems to be a surface feature. I think, can't think of any way uh, in nature of really making these you know, things falling or rolling down these, these steep cliffs wouldn't be so consistent in terms of being very straight and you know, attacking the entire rock surface. So that's why I think it's anthropogenic. Again, more parallel lines. It's beautiful. You can really see I the polyps. It's got to be a Paragorgia. But the polyps are not really big. Yeah. We're at a depth of 851. We're moving up uh, across soft sediment here and moving up to potentially another rock uh, face. Looks like uh, it's time to leave the bottom. Um, our depth here is 862 meters. We've been exploring the west wall of Alvin Canyon all day. Um, 
at a depth ranging from about 950 to 800 meters. It's easy to geek out when you have so much new knowledge being shared with you and so many new things being learned. Okay, we're passing through the water column, headed to a depth of about 1070 meters. Today we are surveying the east wall of Alvin Canyon. We give our viewers a spatial awareness here. You brought up the Grand Canyon and about a mile deep in some portions of the Grand Canyon, about 1,800 meters, and, and that's approximately the depth that we visited uh, a few days ago. Our goals today are to characterize the geomorphology of the canyon wall, as well as benthic habitats, including deep sea coral and sponge communities. So if any of the previous dives were any indication, I think we'll see something new today. Oh wow, look at this. Moving over mostly soft sediment with a few scattered rocks, but we're about ready to approach a face of a cliff. A lot of rubble here at the base. There's the guy I want, the walking action it's pretty amazing to me it's pretty amazing to me too <laughs> those of us who uh hit rocks and dig mud will take away from sort of these dives is, is sort of how these these systems are evolving on a larger scale several overhangs but again not very much uh, biology yeah, we're not seeing uh, many larger sessile organisms here. A few large sponges, but most of the corals are, are fairly small in height. We've seen a lot of bamboo corals yet. We haven't seen any really even medium-sized ones or certainly not any large ones. We've seen maybe a couple of old uh, toppled over holds of bamboo corals, um, but nothing that suggests that they have been allowed to grow um, or growing for an extended period of time, i.e. that 80 to 100 years kinds of things.